business owner in a uh, member of the Baba and also the community friend. So uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Mr. Livingstone, for uh, offer us the comfortable place that we can uh, meeting today. And uh, my name is Frank Tran. And uh, first of all, I'm uh, sorry my English is not uh, perfect, but uh, the only person understand me uh, the best is myself. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, person is uh, most of the time misunderstood me is uh, Mr. David Dorch. <laughs> and so today we welcome uh, Jiva Reed, our mayor candidate for the next uh, election. And uh, we uh, welcome uh, Dr. Ken. He is the city of uh, Alameda Healthcare District and also the Channel Health Council. Welcome uh, all of you, and especially Mr. Larry Reed, is the father of uh, Triva Reed. Uh, so, he, in the last few years in our community, especially as a Vietnamese American, uh, not in a, in a small section, but in the large, everyone in the city, in the country, we suffer by pandemic. Um, so, uh, especially in Oakland, our business has a lot of uh, are suffered by uh, the high prayer, um, the safety, and also we uh, really expect that all together we hope our future leader will make change in the better position. And as a realtor, I work with the real estate business, most of the landlords, more property owner suffer a lot by pandemic as of uh, the tenants look like they have uh, between the landlord right and tenant right is unbalanced so that we want our leader will adjust that not for one day two days but in the future and we hope that uh, at least especially the local government has some solution to help the landlord and more business uh, owner in our city. Because like uh, several, some small landlord, we have uh, a couple of units, but most of, the time, most, most of them have taxed by 50% or more, like in a new case, and that the landlord has to pay many the duty tax and also the property. So we feeling that is really hurt for our community. And uh, somebody when we went out to see that there's uh, a lot of uh, people complained about Oakland. It's like some area is lawless. Many times our business, our small business in the community is attacked by bad guys. But the law enforcement look like they post to make the response uh, correctly, like before pandemic. I hope that uh, to address all those problems, we need our voice. And the most important for the next uh, election, myself, I believe is Triva Reed, she is the good qualification to be our next, our Oakland's next mayor. Please vote for her, because when we vote for her, that means we have uh, also Larry Reed. <laughs> Most experiences <laughs> in the community <laughs> yeah. in the history. So we have we vote one, but we have uh, two <laughs> votes to a powerful in the in, in, in the role of the leader. 
And also, we believe that on the uh, in long term, the clarity, the frame of our community, the frame of the business, and the fairness in the issue court, one side is for the for the Oakland people and also very close to our community. I heard some uh, somebody say that it's, uh, he is very close to our community. He uh, he know how to do the chopstick, <laughs> and also he loves the noodle, uh, deep noodle food, a pho, a pho, called pho, right? <laughs> so, and right now I would like to introduce you to our future next Oakland mayor, Priva Reed. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much for your trying to understand what I say. You spoke well. <coughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Excellent and with grace. Oh, thank you. I am so excited to be back here. My family opened back up the doors to have us here. And thank you, Mr. Tran, for hosting. We're so grateful for your support. Dr. Chan, all of you for being here. It was like yesterday that we sat in the same room, December 2019, that Uncle David, Christina, Father, many of you were here helping to launch me into this role that I stand in today because you helped to get me here. I'm so grateful for your investment in me, um, your support, your encouragement, and helping to keep me standing strong in all that we are working to lead through during these very, very challenging times. But I felt the strength of your support. I see you out in the community, and I know that what you're experiencing has been incredibly impactful to you. Um, I see you, I honor you, I appreciate the work that you're leading, and I still need you, <laughs> which is why you're here with me today. And so I thank you for that. I never imagined that I would be standing here with you today with this opportunity to run to serve as your mayor. Yes. Excited. It is exciting. Yes. I have lived um, from that deep place of watching my father serve for 35 plus years here wow. in the city. Um, him watching my great grandmother. Emma May Reed serve wow. and help to mobilize a community and to mobilize our church and to mobilize our family. I was raised the oldest born granddaughter of his siblings of 130 cousins. Wow. He's got a big family. That's just his son. And so I was raised to serve. I was raised to see people, to hear, to understand and to what I saw my family do, and the women in my family especially, make a way out of no way. And we are in that season right now in Oakland, where it is tough. And as a leader, looking to hear strategies and solutions to bring us through, to support your businesses, to keep you safe and protected, to keep our community housed, to keep your employees and family working, to keep these business doors open with you thriving, to ensure that our AAPI community, our Vietnamese community, that you know that you are safe, protected, loved, and honored here in Oakland, that this is a place for you that we lifted up World Refugee Day in honor of our immigrant community, in honor of our refugee community, that as we look to do things out of the country, in Ukraine and other places, that this is an opportunity for us in Oakland to wrap our arms around our refugee, our immigrant community, and show the support that all of us deserve. Coming into office, I really thought I was just here to run, to serve District 7, to lead East Oakland forward beyond the great change that my father had led for 24 years as the councilman. And it was during this time that we're in right now, which is the budget season. We're in the midst of our budget decisions. It was during those budget discussions that I saw not every one of my colleagues was really about equity and taking care of people 
and taking care of small businesses, taking care of communities of color who long felt left out from Low Saigon, from Chinatown, and East Oakland. Communities who've been crying out, saying, do you see me? Do you hear me? We want more public safety resources, not less. We want to know that our businesses can stay open from one generation to the next, just like we see here at California Waste Solutions and at your business shows. We want to know for our mom and pop and our small property owners that as we're making progressive business tax decisions, that we have you at the table, that we make balanced decisions about the type of taxes that you pay that impact your ability to stay here, to maintain your property, and to help keep us housing stable in a community where we've got 5,000 people living on the street. Mm -hmm. And so as your mayor, I am fighting for you. I'm fighting for you right now as your council member. I serve on public safety. I serve on our budget and finance, working to see with the funds we have, how we can best deliver more for you and not less, even though it may be tight. I've learned at an early age that we can find a way to make sure that people have the basics, food, clothing, shelter being able to have income stability so that you can stay here as the prices soar around us. And so I'm working right now to help ensure that we progress the issues that are important for you and doing it in circles like this, making sure that we don't expect you to come to City Hall, which many of you are running businesses, you're leading your lives, you're going to volleyball tournaments for yeah. your sons. <laughs> yeah, right. And so it's our responsibility to show up to meet you where you are, to hear from you, to listen to you, to work with you, and to build Oakland back better, for it to be a just and resilient recovery, for you to thrive and for you to stay rooted here in this community. And so I'm working to ensure that we have more deeply um, invested public safety, working to make sure that you've got community <coughs> safety ambassadors in our business corridors, along International Boulevard, working with Caltrans. They're about to put 215 new pedestrian street lights to improve lighting, putting new waste receptacles to improve just the illegal dumping and blight and ensuring that we've got the resources and the commitment from waste management, sorry, to come pick it up because they've not been doing their job. <laughs> uh, hey. They're not doing their job and they're not hiring with their contract. I'm mad at waste management, so that's another story, just reminded me. And so I'm working to make sure that we invest more in our youth. We have not invested enough in our youth for them to have youth services like our seniors we've not increased the amount of services that we can be delivering for our seniors to get them out of the house to keep them healthy to keep them thriving in this season of their lives and to ensure that our businesses stay rooted and not leave Oakland. and so i'm here to listen to you i'm here to work with you i'm here to build the type of oakland that i believe that we all love and care for and want to see our children and grandchildren thrive in from one generation to the next and to ensure that you're at the table doing it with me. I've been committed to our community, our Vietnamese community, our Chinatown Chamber partnerships from when I worked at PG&E and from prior to PG&E. And so I hope that as we build this campaign, we build momentum. Right now, we're first in the polls. All right. We've got a, hey! Bruce was standing right here the last time we were in the room. <laughs> it's good to see you back, Bruce. But right now, we're building a lot of momentum with our campaign. There are a number of candidates in this race, but we're in first place. And we've got to build on that momentum to launch a field campaign to meet every voter we can across the city. In times past, this election has brought mayoral, mayoral candidates and has voted mayor for one particular district in the city, from Montclair. I believe that this is an opportunity to change that representation of who we have serving and where we have serving and having a leader that's got the lived experience of what we're doing. I've been unemployed. We've had to work to keep our small business doors open. I've suffered the deep trauma of gun violence in our family. We've worked in our family to overcome the mental and behavioral health issues. I've lived childhood trauma that we see a number of our youth experiencing today. And so I fight for us from that place of having lived it, having legislated it, working for Nancy Skinner, who is our state senator at this time, having worked deeply in community in over 12 organizations to support us, to strengthen us, and to empower us in your voice at the table. So I hope that you all will join me and help us move over the board for all of us. We deserve it, and I know we can deliver on it together. That's my brother, Andy. Yeah. All right, Andy. <laughs> Thank you.
Dad, did you want to say anything, Paul? No, I'm just waiting to listen to questions. My good friend Bruce just came in. I see Bruce. Bruce I know is here. Bruce is concerned about public safety. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we all are yeah. concerned about public safety. Yeah, I see. So I was waiting Well, to my hear question to you, and you seem like uh, being late, um, how are you going to help us as a community at the city's um, residence to prevent some of the crimes that can be prevented? but no resource to prevent. How are you gonna help us in that area? Well, I fought for public safety for day one. You know, I served East Oakland. East Oakland is the Coliseum area over to the San Leandro border. It's the airport up to the Oakland Zoo. And it's the part of our city that has the highest rates of shooting, gun violence, and home <coughs> And now we're experiencing that all over. So at the beginning of coming into office, I was fighting to get more public safety resources. I didn't approve a budget that delivered less for us. I advocated for more police academies. I advocated for more police resources. I advocated for more community safety officers. And I advocated for more funding into department violence prevention. Those are the things that I'm doing now. And as the mayor, what's really significant is that as mayor, I have the ability to create a $3.8 billion budget that prioritizes what's most important for Oaklanders. As a council member, I negotiate on $50 million. So the opportunity to serve as our mayor puts me in a position to ensure that the equity that we've been driving for and where and how we deliver public safety resources are spread throughout the city in the areas that need it the most. We also have to have a leader that is invested in ensuring that we keep our officers here, that we develop a, a culture as we're working to transform OPD that shows them that we want them to be here, that we're invested in them being here, and that we have to incentivize that opportunity to get to our 100 more officers that we've got budgeted and they're not coming in the door yet. So we do need more of the public safety resources. We do need more sworn officers. And we do need to shift on where they're actually showing up right now. We have officers doing things that they shouldn't be doing. They don't need to be helping with abandoned vehicles, right? They need to be out there patrolling and having a presence in other areas. And I'm committed to making sure that they do that. And then we have our Department of Violence Prevention. The Department of Violence Prevention is really key because it really tries to help address the preventive things. How do we help stop crime before it even happens? Where do we need to invest more in community programs and workforce readiness training programs, making sure people are housed and safe so that some of the issues that have been triggers for them out of desperation, not feeling that they have the basis that they have, have caused some issues of increase in spikes in, in violence and robbing and carjacking and taking what they believe that they should have. And so we've got to also look at, Bruce, how we actually take care of our community before the crime actually happens. How do we protect communities that live in these very impactful areas that want to feel safe walking out their door, walking, going to the park, and we've got to improve on that in a number of different ways that I'm committed to. And we've got to meet with our businesses to talk to hear about what will help you. You know, we're not meeting with you. I found out about what you're experiencing on the news. And it broke my heart to hear about what you're having to do day in and day out to keep your business safe and protected. Thank you. And so we've well, got to ensure that our business corridors, and one of the things that I fought for in the budget last year, Bruce, that we're waiting to get council approval on still, are public safety cameras, is enforcement cameras to see what's going on. I know that many of you have cameras for your business, but we've got to have some improved tools and technology outside of the personnel to make sure that we're capturing and using that information to enforce, to cite, and to hold those who are causing a lot of trouble in our community accountable. We have lack accountability. Well, it's easy for us to sit here and say that we can do things and we're going to prevent things, but we're actually not doing anything right now. Uh, let's say, for example, we get officers leaving every day one, two, three, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. I got a rookie that come into the locker room, drop their bell buckle right on the ground, and walk away. Say, see you guys later. The history of OPDs has never happened. We've seen a lot of them lately. Mm -hmm. Other agency offer them more money, more safety, job security. We're not doing anything like that. We're working on an incentive right now. You're right. The sheriff's department is offering twenty to thirty thousand and they've taken a number of our officers. We've lost 52 officers this year. I just left the new academy 
the 188th and some of the 189th, they were out at Verdi's Carter Park in East Oakland. We we're having a big OPD community event, engaging our officers. We want to see more. We've actually had more coming into our academy since Chief Armstrong came in than we've had in some of the, the past police academy classes. But we've got to keep them in the class. We've got to get them into the class. We've got to do more with partnerships with Peralta Community Colleges, building a pipeline even earlier to get a community that wants to be committed to work and serve in our police department. They've not felt supported since I've come into office. The dynamics on our city council with some of our council colleagues have not led many of our police sworn officers as stretched as they are to want to stay and commit to serving in Oakland. That's a problem. I go to lineups, been going to lineups, ride alongs. I meet with our deputy chief, our captain, just left them all, show you the pictures later, of just how we work with our command team in area five and area six to figure out how do we work more with the little bit we have to show up in our community every day. Our officers are not taking overtime. We've had savings on overtime because they're too stretched. And so we realize that a part of this is that they have to see that they're valued. And we will have to invest in them. We'll have to invest in the ones who are here, not to leave. And in this budget that we're working on right now, we're investing even in their mental health wellness. We've got officers who are just not in the strongest place, feeling supported and having the issues that they see every day and going back to that every day with their own wellness issues and they're stretched. And so we've got to show them that we appreciate them. We've got to show them this is a place for them to stay. And then we've got to show others who are not here that we've got to send us to bring them here and to keep them here. And that this is an environment that they can actually thrive in. We're working with our new inspector general to do that with just the oversight and the policies that she's helping to bring into Oklahoma City. Uh, can I have a question? So I see that uh, I got robbed and um, I talked to one of the police and they said, oh, we only have like 600 police in the mm -hmm. whole city of Oakland and what do you need 1,500? Mm -hmm. So we're 60% short, mm -hmm. right? And you, you said, you're gonna show, you appreciate that. So the point is that not about the budget, budget is one of them, right? Mm -hmm. But the point is that they don't feel safe doing their job because mm -hmm. they can just come to downtown and miss shot. Are you, how how things you keep like you keep saying, oh, let's appreciate them. What's the plan to show we appreciate them? I think a part of that is showing up for them. They don't see leaders showing up with them. Is they don't good? see they don't see leaders having their back. When we make decisions at City Hall around the resources that they need, around the budget that they need to do their job, when they see that the council votes down the things that they need, that is challenging for them. And so they need to have a strong mayor who's going to fight to make sure that we work to put in the budget what they need to take care of the issues that they have, whether it's incentives, whether it's ensuring that there is funding for overtime if that's needed, whether it's the resources that they need out on the street, that they've got a mayor that's gonna fight for them and a mayor that's gonna work to build a bridge with our council. Right now, we do not have good relationships between our city council and our mayor, and that is a challenge. That is a, a battle between our mayor and our city council that will be challenging to see resolved between now and November. And that's, that's the truth. Um, but if you look at the survey results from what they tell us, they tell us that they don't feel supported. They don't, they don't, exactly. And so a part of, a part of me as a council member, I can show up with them. I can show them that appreciation. But as a leader, we have to make budget decisions that actually deliver. We've got budgeted positions that we've not filled, meaning we've, we've got room for 100 more officers that we've got to find a path to bring them on. So we've got to increase our recruitment. We've got to find new places to recruit and recruiting people who look like our community. We've got to have Asian officers. We've got to have black officers. We've got to have Latino officers. And this new class that I just left, it looks like Oakland. We are starting to have more police academies with people who look like us, who reflect the community, who understand the values and how we want to be policed how we build community and relationships within this force, but they can't be stretched either. Right now, they don't really have a lot of time to build relationships, to stop in and, and talk. And so we've got to build up our force to have the type of services that you deserve as a resident to feel safe and as a business to stay, to stay rooted here with your business. But I believe the leadership matters. I believe who you have as your leader 
Uh, the dad has a very good conversation with the police. Every police love the dad. <laughs> they still do. When I went to the yeah, event today, they said, where's the I talked to three police, and they highly recommend it. So I right, know they love the dad. Um, we do need the plan for that, though. It's cute. Like, you know, we, we talk about appreciation, not appreciation, but the most thing they don't feel safe doing their job. So we need a very specific plan for them to feel safe doing their We've job. We've got a plan. We've got a plan in public safety. We've got to deliver on the plan. We've, we've got a plan. It takes votes in city council to move that plan forward. It takes five council members to approve a plan. And so we've got to have more community like you who put that pressure on our council members to show up and deliver on the public safety that you know we need and that our officers are asking. And so that's a part of that support that they need and that accountability as leaders that we're gonna make the voting decision to give them the resources and the support. I can do it, I've done it, but we've gotta have that collective council that's going to do that in partnership with the mayor with the budget. The mayor put forth in her budget right now some things that I believe will benefit us. And yet council can make some decisions that amend those budget priorities that she put forth in this budget that we're looking at right now. How much money do you have reserved right now or approved by the city council for public safety from outside agency? We ask for their help. Uh, I don't know what that dollar amount is. Um, there is no set dollar amount yeah. for that. There's I mean, to get other outside agencies that come in, you have to put the request in through the Alameda County Sheriff. And the sheriff is the one that can ask Hayward San Leandro, Union City, to come in and then back up our police officers. <coughs> but they don't want to come to our city. Do we got they don't to want to well, come part to of it is that the memorandum so of weird. understanding, Oakland has particular things that they want to see when officers come here, right? That our community has said, when officers show up in Oakland, we want you to show up a particular kind of way. One of those things is that you say you, you can't use tear gas and different things. Mm -hmm. Well, the sheriff's department has their own standards. When the sheriff's department show up, they have their own way that they want to show up to, to manage a situation. They may want to use tear gas, we may not want them to use tear gas. And so there's a difference in this MOU, this Memorandum of Understanding, that is not allowing the current sheriff, who is actually on his way out, we got a new sheriff that I supported, uh, Yesenia Sanchez is coming on, that I believe as mayor, I'll be able to work more intently with her to understand how can we work to resolve some of these issues where the sheriff's department has also not wanted to come and be responsive to the policies and protocol in Oakland. I spoke to um, CHP headquarter last week. I spoke to Noel mm -hmm. right also. I spoke to my good friends upstairs in headquarter about getting CHP coming to our territory to help out. Mm -hmm. Just their appearance on international. Because mm -hmm. in the past we did that, you know, crime reduced tremendously. Yeah. But then we had it bigger between the city council, between the the citizens and all the stuff that don't want agency outside mm -hmm. to come in, and our crime rate went up 50%. Yeah. So I talked to the captain, and he said, Bruce, we're going to go somewhere that we appreciate. We don't go in there to take criticism. It's not about the money. It's about how we can help with our appearance, how we can bring make things different. Mm -hmm. There might be a good chance that CHP will talk to me again. Mm -hmm. I, might, I might have to talk to a lot of officers, sign up some overtime. Mm -hmm. If the budget is passed, I'm not sure it's going to pass or not. I think it's a great opportunity for us to work interagency. Um, when my father worked uh, with Elihu, when he was mayor, we had a strong interagency uh, department relationships where quarterly, I believe, they met CHP, Alameda County Sheriff's, the DA's office, like supervisor's office. There was a well-represented group at the table talking about public safety and a number of other issues and how we work together, how we fund it, how we partner, what's going on, what are the issues. And I think that type of relationship is needed. We don't do that right now. There's not that interagency conversation that's taking place on a regular basis. And we're also not having those agency partners meet in community. In East Oakland, we've got this eight block initiative that we're about to pilot. CHP, Alameda County, Oakland, Public Works, Department of Transportation, 
Police Department, Department of Violence Prevention, <coughs> Alameda County Mental Behavioral Health Care, that we're sitting down monthly to launch a pilot to see how do we take back these eight streets, these eight blocks in East Oakland, and use it as a model for how we can show up in different parts of the community with a well-coordinated, organized effort with all the agencies and community-based organizations and small business owners and churches within this eight blocks. And so I can tell you more about that approach, but I think that's the type of approach as the mayor that we can lead out more and having community at the table to understand if CHP is coming in to have patrol presence or traffic enforcement, which we don't have right now at the city, how they can partner and what that partnership looks like with community at the table as those decisions are being made. Oh, you want to add? I want to make a comment, is that okay? Yeah, sure. When was the last time you walked Little Saigon on the street? I was just out there. You was out there? Yeah. yeah. How often I did you went go out there? there? I've only been out there this year three times. I really suggest that you take some time to go there. I'm from the outside, I'm from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I had a contract with the city two years ago working on BRT. Mm -hmm. And just recently I signed a contract with the city council to work with them as mm -hmm. a business assistant mm -hmm. outreach. Mm -hmm. And after spending several months there, I came back and I told the city council, there's no way we can do any business counseling in Little Saigon. Because business owners there, they fear for their lives. Mm -hmm. They close yeah. at 4.30. Mm -hmm. How the hell are you going to like tell them, oh, expand your business, bring your business into Little Saigon? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. They tell me, okay, Jim, spend time with the community, see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you in the past few weeks, thanks to Andy, who made the introduction, to mm -hmm. Stewart, Stewart met with Lynn and me. And in the past few weeks, we have seen the changes in our community. Mm -hmm. I'll give you just an example. Mm -hmm. These people who've been running and owning business in Little Saigon for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. I know Vietnamese in uh, San Jose, in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They are tough because you came here by boat. Mm -hmm. But I would tell you Vietnamese in Oakland, they are tougher than anybody. Mm -hmm. One, some of the toughest people on earth I know. If you hear their stories of the kind of crap that they go through every day to survive, I told my wife, I said, I gotta come here and work with these people. Yeah. <clears throat> so what I'm telling you is that, you know, when I work with the city and I ask them to come to meetings, stuff, they always afraid to speak up. They ignore me because, you know, why? Why do we need to do that? But just recently, Dion Lim from ABC came, they all came out to meet with her. Cheryl Hurd from NBC came out, they all came and spoke with her. They have nowhere to go because they have reached the end of the limit mm -hmm. in terms of what they can tolerate. And it's all about harassment, it's all about crimes, petty crimes, it's all about hearing someone who robbed them, shoot them, kill them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's gotten to that level, and just five minutes from here. Mm -hmm. it's a, and you know what, the news that she made on ABC and NBC, now it's in Vietnam. People in Vietnam are calling me, what the hell, this is America. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unacceptable. And I tell you that if these toughest people in Oakland, we cannot help them, something, something is wrong with Oakland because mm -hmm. Oakland has abandoned some of the most hardworking, the most loyal people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell you from the outside, you guys gotta take these people seriously, gotta fear them. Mm -hmm. We have to bring changes because if you lose these people, mm -hmm. you're gonna lose Oakland. You're gonna lose a very big piece of Oakland. Mm -hmm. Today, after meeting, thanks again to Stewart, we, we met with two uh, police officers, Jim Beer and Clifford Wong. Mm -hmm. They came up with a crime plan, four points crime plan. I said, I don't want to hear any more like talk, okay? So now they're going to put down on paper a four points crime plan. What's the four points? One is, okay, thank you. One is providing ghost cars. Okay, high visibility patrol between projects. Mm -hmm. They can have cars going mm -hmm. back and forth during the day. They're gonna have a laser focused operation on people committing crime. Yeah. So when these guys point out, hey, that Vietnamese dude who's been robbing people going to the police is gonna go after that mm -hmm. guy. The fourth one, thanks to Denise and, and Vinny, mm -hmm. they this is the first time they offer their valuable real estate, their office space mm -hmm. to the police. So from now on we have a permanent That's office awesome. police presence. Like a substation? Like a substation. That's great. Okay. These guys, one conversation, 
and they they hear their fellow uh, uh, business owners, and they suffer too. Yeah. Okay. We have never done this before, and this whole thing has made our community more united. But I think we still need a lot of help. Yeah. And I hope that with you becoming the mayor, mm -hmm. do not ignore Little Saigon. These are the most hardworking, the most loyal people of Oakland. Yeah. And we gotta take care of them because they're gonna make Oakland better. Yeah. Okay? Well, one of the things that I did, and I appreciate that, and I thank you for your leadership, and I have to just apologize here, I didn't even realize what you were enduring until the news came out. Had, had no idea what our community had been enduring until Hook reached out and shared. I'm in conversation with Dr. Jen Tran, and when we launched our Town Nights Initiative through Department of Violence Prevention, where we show up every Friday night with a particular area of the community, this was in December, and our Vietnamese and our Chinatown communities were not included in that plan. I went back to our chief and said, we've got to include these communities. They may not be the areas with the highest shootings and homicides that we're focused on, but they are incredibly impacted with robberies, with incidents of violence and harm and being attacked. And so that plan was put in place for now for, for every Friday for us to start ensuring that our communities that are in areas of not shooting and homicide heavy have more presence. But what you, your four point plan is exactly the four point plan we've got in East Oakland. We've had to do that with businesses who are robbed eight times a day. Eight times. We have businesses who are robbed, employees who are terrorized and traumatized in East Oakland. And so what I just found out about Little Saigon that you're enduring the same thing that we're working to overcome in East Oakland. I care for our Vietnamese community. I regret that we didn't realize what was taking place. Understanding that a number of our community members did not want to escalate it. I did not realize that they had been fighting for two years with their current council member to get the support, to be heard, and to have funding on these issues until just recently. I spoke with Dr. Jen today as we're trying to navigate through the budget process to understand how do we sustain a four-point plan? It's one thing to get a four-point plan, it's another thing to ensure that we sustain it and we're not just there for one week or And two. hold the people accountable. And, and hold the people accountable. And we're working with our DA's office to hold them accountable. We gotta work with our police department to one, identify them, arrest those who are gonna continue to cause harm, and then work with the DA's office to charge them, and then work with our judicial system to do their part with the court system. And so that's a part that I've been working on with our team at the city, at the OPD, with our DAs, and the county, and I'll continue to do that as our mayor, and I will not forget you. And now I realize the issues that are impactful and where they're coming. All right, thank you. Yeah. I just want to pick you back on what you just said. Jimmy, I mean, I've met a lot of people in my life, but a lot of doers, a lot of talkers, you, uh -huh. my brother, you're a doer. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very impressed with yes. you. I couldn't I do agree. it without, without all these people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can do mm -hmm. now. One as a council member mm -hmm. and one as a future mayor. Mm -hmm. So you've seen and you've heard some of the horrendous mm -hmm. crimes that are being committed in Little Saigon mm -hmm. and in neighboring mm -hmm. communities. So the four point plan that Chief Beer has suggested, mm -hmm. three can be done immediately, mm -hmm. including the ghost clock. But you are one of the nine council members who have the reputation of support for mm -hmm. you. go to an academy, you go to mm -hmm. you show up, and people know that you're a strong support. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is probably give Chief Beer a call and say, hey, you support the four plan, yeah. including the substation. Because there's still some, well, depending on the criteria and how, how the, the demand, the ones are gonna be able to fix it up. It's still kind of a toss up. Sure, he may have committed, but when is it going to happen? Is it a year from now? Two years from now? But coming from you, a phone call to him and say, hey, I support what you had suggested to the Vietnamese community. Yeah. I think that carries a lot of weight. I would do that. I'll call Chief Armstrong and what I shared with Dr. Jen Tran. Who's Dr. Jen Tran? She's the chamber, Vietnamese chamber. Oh, okay. okay. Jennifer Tran. Jennifer Tran. Jennifer Tran. Tran. She's been having these conversations with Nikki. It's the budget season now, and I've not heard any of the four-point plan put into the budget to sustain it. It was just created okay. today. Okay, yeah. so I think making sure that I am the council member for East Oakland, there are fine lines in me driving the budget for Little Saigon. 
you have your, your own council member. So it's how do I work with your council member to uplift this, talking to the chief, mm -hmm. Armstrong and Beer, to say this is what I heard. I think that's a great idea. Chuck, you've got someone who's donated some property for the substation or however. I don't even know if there's a budget ask with that many y'all have to Not yet, not yet, but we will. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah, so I think it's all about cost. And, and if there's a cost, this is when you get the cost done. Yeah. This is the, bu sure, the budget sure. process is this short. Yeah. Tomorrow by 12 noon, the other council member needs to have their stuff in the report for us to see it public. And so it's moving <clears> that quick. So this is great. I'm happy to call right. when I leave here. And we need you to help put the pressure on your council member for that district, yeah. who is also the president of the council, who has all the power in Absolutely. the budget process to ensure that we deliver on this support. Nikki staff, Tiffany was at the meeting. Well. Perfect. So that will happen. Okay. Part two. But I, I will support it. They bring it forth, right. I'll support it. Absolutely. Part two. When you become the mayor, you talked about seat at the table, you talked about the budget plan that you yeah. had, you didn't see the Vietnamese and the Chinatown communities, seat at the table. Yeah. When you become the mayor, you won't have the power to appoint commissioners mm -hmm. and board members. Mm -hmm. Right now, it doesn't really reflect the population of Oakland. Mm -hmm. So if you can increase, and when I talk to the county chief, the fire chief, about why the Asian Americans are underrepresented, well, the recruitment process, we get those out, but nobody from the Asian community applied. I don't want to hear that anymore. Mm -hmm. The outreach, it, it can, we can do a better job reaching out to the Vietnamese, to the Chinese, to the Filipinos, to get them I agree. excited about politics, Get them to serve on commissions on the board. That I support that. Is a commitment that we can hear from. I, it's a commitment. I look to right. drive for equity. You should be represented. Thank you. Okay, just one, one more point that I yes, think is very important to hear. You know, when I talk with our business owners here, even what they're going through, they tell me, Jim, it's not just about these memes. It's about, it's about the city. It's about the Absolutely. people. So we're not talking about here just about their own suffering. They want to do after school programs that mm -hmm. include kids of all races. Mm -hmm. They want to have senior care programs that includes, you know, Vietnamese and, and everyone else. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I think that if they take care of the people, the children, of the senior citizens in their community, then they won't be threatened. They won't be attacked because mm -hmm. they want to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so as you become mayor, think that these people, they not only take care of things about themselves, mm -hmm. they think about everybody. Mm -hmm. So those icons just not for being made just for everybody. I we agree. want this to be a tourist destination. Mm -hmm. We want this to be an exclusive place. Mm -hmm. Okay? These come from all the business owners mm -hmm. that I meet. So we are we're not thinking just about ourselves. Okay. I, I love it. I think Little Saigon deserves a lot more support and to have heard what, where you've not had support, I'm fully committed to making sure that we uplift not just the needs of Little Saigon, but the entire city. We're all crying out for, for service and support. We all deserve to be safe, and especially our youth and our seniors. And you'll see in the budget that focus on youth and seniors, but we've not delivered for them. And we're feeling the weight of that because we're not taking care of our community at the earliest stages. Oh, yes. Um we um, we just want to be treated fair, fair, fairly like same 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 that they all they all they they they, they all district around Oakland, mm -hmm. um, not like currently, see the Oakland treat at like that, a dumb place, two side end to end with a homeless encampment. Mm -hmm. What they do at night? Only uh, I I believe they do need housing, but not at night. What they do? They roam around, do a lot of crime. And today I get get on meeting. I see a lot of girls walking around, mm -hmm. and I see some girl, they're 15 years old, 16 years old, and I I wait point out to the police. Those pin hang around the here, on, on the East 14 and 12 Avenue. Mm -hmm. That they hang around about mm -hmm. pin. Mm -hmm. Right now probably about 10 girls around right now, mm -hmm. and it's sad. It um, we 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 are like. We like on uh, Oakland and like on a number two league in United mm -hmm. of America yeah. for for child for for child explode 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 mm -hmm. sex 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 trafficking. Mm -hmm. I report that all the time to Oakland. At at at, at a future man, I hope you fix that. Yeah. And I I, I see the kid it just like my 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 kid too. Mm -hmm. I feel very sad. Yeah. It hurt. It is. And uh, also the rep uh, the rep the rep the. Also, also, also the reputation of Oakland. Mm -hmm. it, it's really sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Can I come in? Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to say uh, a few words. Uh, 
okay? Uh, because I have to go and, and still want to go. First of all, I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank you, Stu Chen. Mm -hmm. Thank you Incredible a lot. For, 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 you know, uh, extending your work beyond uh, Chinatown mm -hmm. and trying to work with our Vietnamese community yeah. and leaders. Like, well, and part of this community. Right. So, so we all you know, have to know that right now that we are one community. Yes. Correct. Oakland is a community. We need to stand up and work. And I hear all of you concerned, and I know that. Is everything that's coming today, don't just rely on her and say, Mayor, do this, Mayor, do that. Mayor, you have all the power. No. We, as a community, we have to help the mayor to do that. We have to help the council to do that. I thank you for your question about how many times have you, you know, gone down to leave and say, oh, this is not her history. See, so we have to look at who is out in our district. Is she doing it? Does she care about our you know, community and all that? Those are things. You cannot ask council for different district come down to your district. You can raise your concern and she being part of supporting, but we have to work with our council in our district. We have to put pressure on it, we have to do everything we can to get her moving. And I hear about you know, police. I talked to Martha. Anthony Martha, the chief of police San Jose, because they get a few young police officers you know, go down and work. I said, can you check with them to see why? The answer coming back, Oakland is very, very tough to be police officer. Mm -hmm. And we do not get a piece. She said that, okay, we, you know, we come down, we appreciate them, not, and your concern is, what, what appreciate them? You know what know the root, as you mentioned in the last minute. The root is that uh, the police going out there trying to get crime, trying to you know, catch people. When they got those you know, people, what happened? We not prosecute them. What's happened? We releasing them. Yeah. And then the next thing is that, uh, What's happened if there's a lawsuit? See the Oakland go and settle right away. Make the police feel really bad because, hey, I'm out there doing my work. And then here, we get a lawsuit again, Oakland police, and you guys go out and settle it. That's, those are things I learned it truly from San Jose, that we get our officer, you know, living and went to San Jose. So I think the police will, will work, and that's the city thing. But I think that we all here today, that we need to start put pressure on all the council, mm -hmm. especially the council in our district, that we very really concerned. But we have to work with and put a lot of pressure on all of them, including the current mayor. Mm -hmm. Okay, But we cannot just sit in here and think that Treba sits with me, sit with us. First they sit thinking about running, she came to me and asked, Uncle, what do I do? I say that you do not fall into out of council, mm -hmm. just activist. Yeah, I, I love that we care for poor people, but how do you care for them? Where do you get the money? They need job. They need you get money to take care of them. But if you don't have business in the city, how are you gonna change generate money? How are you going to create a job if all the business in Oakland is shutting down? If everybody is moving out of Oakland? Scary. Where's the money coming? Where's the job? We need to create job locally mm -hmm. here in the city. And we need to create economy, tax money to for the city of Oakland so they can fund it, you know, other stuff to care for our community. And in our Vietnamese community, that we need to start getting more and more people involved. Mm -hmm. We need to build, like this is a community, mm -hmm. not just five, 10 people, but the whole community, mm -hmm. that we stand up, mm -hmm. we ask for it. We have the power, mm -hmm. okay? So it's not we here to support the tree, but, and then, hey, you become a mayor, this is what you promised us, but you can't do it. Council, within anything that they do, 
in this six volt. You know, we need to, and they only allow to talk to what? Four? Mm -hmm. Four people. So we, we can talk to all of them. We can put questions to all of them. But we need to support people that are with us, like Tripa today, we need to support mm -hmm. to get her in the office. Because people understand it, people are willing to work with us. Mm -hmm. But besides, whoever the mayor cannot just have the magic wand or all the power to say this. Now it's like in Vietnam. <laughs> okay? If, if you're the mayor of the city, you can just say something. Everybody has mm. to work it. You understand? Me? But here, they did vote. They need to get all out of the council together. I've been working years with my brother. Then we read. And those are I learned that he cannot just do it himself. He has his limitation. We can talk to all of them. Not they. They cannot talk to all of them. But we can talk to all of them. We can question them. So I think that right now that the question is answered that one. To appreciate the police, mm -hmm. we need to work with district attorney. Mm -hmm. We need to work with city of Oakland, city attorney, mm -hmm. to make sure that don't go out to settle everything. We are cool city. Mm -hmm. We don't have that kind of money. Lazy. Mm -hmm. Don't just settle because you're lazy. You don't want to do hard work. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fight. Mm -hmm. You have to fight yeah. to help the police. Yeah. District attorney, you have to prosecute. You have to prosecute people, mm -hmm. right? They're not prosecuting right now. That's right. And the, so, well, the, the, and the prosecutors are challenged because the judges aren't actually sentencing them. And uh, so if the police know that if they pick them up and arrest them, the DA's office aren't going to charge them because the judge is not going to sentence them, no one feels empowered to do what needs to get done. So and that's what we've been experiencing. Right. Recently. So therefore, counsel work with them or may work with them. A community get the power. Yeah. We need to work with district attorney. We need to pressure on them. We need to work with city attorney. We need to pressure them. Stand up as a community together. And we fight and we have the right to ask them to do the work. Because we live in here, we pay tax here, we stand up as a community. That's what I'm asking. Okay? Not just one person. And we, that's what Chinatown neighbors did. Right? That's that's what we saw, the, the voice of our Chinatown neighbors showing up, having press conferences, lifting up all their issues, writing the governor letters, writing the mayor letter. We saw that collective force from our Chinatown community that drove for a lot of the changes that you helped Absolutely. help to lead. And it is the power of the people. It's the same thing I say in East Oakland. East Oakland has been left out like Little Saigon has been left out because our neighbors are tired. They're working three and four jobs. They got businesses, they're trying, they're doing so much. And so I've had to work to get them out, to get their voices heard, to fight with me for us to deliver for East Oakland. And that's the same power that David is sharing that you have to show up, to put pressure on, because there are people who come to city council meetings who don't have your best interests. They're not speaking for you. They're saying that we don't need more police services. You don't need patrol. You don't need this four point plan. You need other things, but that's not what you're saying that you need. And so we need you to put weight on what Jim is lifting up through the Unity Council and in partnership with you at the council meetings and with your council member. And then there are some of the council members that don't care about you. They care about what's the next office that they're going to hold. And so you've got all those folks that are out there that will bring the bear on some of those chicken, excuse my language, chicken shit council members. So, and get them to do the things that they want them to do. Like you get that group called, what is it, ATP, Anti-Police Defamation? They don't like police officers. They would wish, they wish the city didn't have any police officers. Yeah. And a lot of them don't even live in Oakland. Mm -hmm. and, and their action impacts the quality of your life and your ability to operate your business in a safe environment. It is just amazing of how the city has, has has changed over the years. And they were the ones who called into council yesterday. <laughs> we didn't hear from you at council meeting, but who we heard from is this very group mm. that he just mentioned. They came and spoke. And so when they come and speak, 
it gives the impression that that's what everyone in Oakland wants. Yeah. Until we hear from other wow. Oaklanders like you who say, that's not what we want. We want this four point plan. We want you to invest in it. We want to have a substation and we want you to fund it in the budget now. We want to know that you're going to invest in it, not just say it. Like you said, we don't want words, we want action. You get action by showing up and making sure that the budget follows those decisions. I'm sorry, Dad, but I wanted to say that they were all, that was the voice of the people who called into our council. But you want to make sure that you have an elected official that cares about you, that cares about the quality of your life and your ability to operate your business and not care about what offices, the next political office they're going to go to. Because I'm just telling you, I can go right down the line and tell you right now, who don't care about you? And you can look at their track record over the years in terms of as it relates to funding more police academies, where they stood at. And I'm just saying, he used to always call me and try to convince me to run for mayor. And if I had listened to him a long time ago, I probably would have done it. But I didn't, because I was more concerned about changing the district in which I was elected uh, to serve. But you guys don't really understand the power that you have and the influence that you can have on that city council. And you can put the same fear of God in those council members that all these anti-police organizations put the fear of God in those council members to get them to do the things that they want to. But you have the ability to organize and to speak and not just having Bruce speak or Carl Chan speak or Stu speak. Or Stu speak. But Thank you. Well, I'm just telling you, you really don't understand the power that you have. And you got to use that power. So, so the bottom line is I'm asking all of you that we get power to stand up and ask for it, right? But we need to work together like a team. Stuart committed. Yes, I mean, you know, all to work with all of us. Yes. Right? Right. But, not only standing up and ask for it means guarantee you get what you ask for. It's guarantee what you ask for is we have to support and get our friends, our people who understand it, who are willing to support us, get them in office. And to get in office, it requires two things. Supporting them financially, make your contribution. Supporting them by getting them both get out and vote to put our people in office. So when you stand up, you know your, your voice will be here by them. And that's the bottom line. Amen. Thank you, friend of mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck Thank to you. you. I know you'll be here. Đi đâu cũng ủng hộ đó. <cười> Đi hai hàng không? Đi hai hàng không? 
Um, businesses have closed. Businesses are afraid. Like it's all it's youth services. We got a senior center right there. We got a youth organization. We spoke about. So it's everything. And so it's an all hands on approach. Like everybody comes together. If these eight blocks are that important with the people who are living here, who want to stay living, businesses, then we've got to have an approach that all of us come together. Let's take it. Let's make it. And so we need. We, we and, and so we're trying to see how do we replicate it? How do we make sure all the city departments are involved, all the county departments, mental health, behavioral health. We got our community health center, Roots Community Health. They're going to bring like a mobile unit to test, to vaccinate, to check blood pressure and just regular health related issues. And they connect them to navigators to help them. We got Youth Alive, which is our violence prevention intervention. Like, youth, like we got everybody out there. And it's, but we have to coordinate this ourselves, right? And so I'm all about meeting the community. So I did my friend when we have the form. So the uh, maximum contribution today about nine hundred dollars. But uh, whatever you feel uh, comfortable, please uh, put in there. And also, you uh, put your uh, contact info with the phone number. So, myself, I do the, the maps. So, please support her. She will be the, the best mayor for our city. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your being here today. <laughs> Uh, you can go business with me, so you can do uh, and we can go. Oh, yeah, I remember I saw you. So you do uh, lots of lots of you know, you buy a couple of houses and uh, the property management will come like, oh. The castle, from, uh, from yeah, I remember you yeah. came in the castle, okay. asked you to talk about like construction. Yeah. 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 But yeah. she came out and she recognized the community woman Yeah. 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 Yeah.